Hello, everyone. Hello from the Caspian Policy Center. Uh, I'm Afghan Nifty, Chief Executive Officer of the Caspian Policy Center. Today, we are having a very important event called Strategies for Inclusive Economic Growth, uh, Women's Entrepreneurship in Tajikistan. Uh, once again, I'd like to welcome all our panelists and attendees, and thank you all for tuning in from across the United States and the Caspian region. Uh, during the webinar, we will be discussing the recent advances made in uh, facilitating women starting and growing businesses in Tajikistan, as well as impact of the global pandemic on those gains. Supporting women's entrepreneurship is a sustainable pathway for increasing living standard, standards and generating equitable economic growth for the entire Caspian region. While today's event will focus on Tajikistan, maybe of the lessons are applicable across the region and beyond. Today, we bring together a panel of international development experts and regional businesswomen to discuss the current situation of women entrepreneurship in Tajikistan. This event is held in conjunction with the release of Caspian Policy Center brief, uh, which explores short and long-term strategies, how uh, we can best support female-owned enterprises during the economic recession and for, the, for decades to come. Uh, this is a very interesting report, and I would uh, actually encourage you to uh, check it through our website. Uh, we'll be hearing from an impressive lineup of speakers today. Ambassador Susan Elliott will be moderating the discussion, who is our uh, senior advisor and also former U.S. ambassador to Tajikistan. And we also have speakers Dr. Randy Kolstad, the acting mission director at USAID in Tajikistan, uh, who will be delivering a keynote speech for us. Uh, I'd like to once again thank all our panelists and thanks for all attendees for joining us today at the Caspian Policy Center. Uh, we are very proud to host this important event. And now I'd like to turn the floor to Ambassador Elliot uh, to moderate the discussion and introduce to our keynote speaker. Speaker, thank you. There, there, I'm off mute, so hold on. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Afghan. And uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's program. I think strategies for inclusive economic growth for women in Tajikistan is uh, a topic near and dear to my heart. As uh, Afghan told you, uh, my name is Susan Elliott, and I was US ambassador to Tajikistan from 2012 to 2015. So I'm really delighted to be able to moderate today's discussion to discuss ways that women in Tajikistan are advancing their economic capabilities by developing ownership of businesses, uh, particularly and also looking at the financial sector. You know, owning a business is a pathway for women's economic development and gender equality. And these are goals that the UN has laid out in its 2020 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The government of Tajikistan also has taken a number of steps to build a supportive environment for women to start and grow businesses. From 2015 to 2020, the number of female owned businesses in Tajikistan grew by about 30,000, an impressive number. And the amount of government loans given to women also increased by about 63%. These statistics are encouraging because women's empowerment was an issue, as I said, that I worked on with my colleagues from USAID and the government of Tajikistan and the private sector during my time as ambassador. But despite progress, there continued to be obstacles to women's entrepreneurship. They remain, and especially one of the biggest ones that we all have to deal with is the impact of the global COVID pandemic. So today, what we would like to do is discuss these challenges and how Tajik women, and as Efkan mentioned, women of the region are finding ways to overcome the obstacles and develop uh, their own businesses. So we've gathered a distinguished group of experts to participate in today's uh, discussion. And uh, I would, before we begin, I want to first recognize the Caspian Policy Center's research intern, Priya Misra. She's been the driving force behind today's program and has written a policy brief on today's topic. We have a link to that in the chat, but you can also go to the Caspian Policy Center's website to, um, to read the report. 
and we will have a discussion. And then after that, uh, we'll have some Q&A among myself and the panelists. And then following that, we will open up the, um, to the audience to ask Q's and A's. So you can type your questions into the, the Q&A box and we will um, monitor that. And I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. So I first want to apologize. We started a little bit late because we're having some technical difficulties uh, with uh, connecting to our friends in Tajikistan. So our keynote speaker, Dr. Randy Kolstad is here, but you won't be able to see him, but fortunately you'll be able to hear his remarks. So let me just introduce quickly uh, Randy. Randy is the acting mission director for USAID in Tajikistan. He's been with the US Agency for International Development for about 20 years, and he's held a variety of leadership positions in India, Iraq, Zambia, Egypt, and Nambia. And before he went to Dushanbe, Dr. Kolstad served at USAID's Regional Development Mission for Asia, and he was an inaugural member of the Senior Technical Group. He has a PhD in International help from Johns Hopkins University and served as a Peace Corps volunteer in southeastern Morocco. So I will turn the, um, the floor over now to Dr. Kolstad. And again, um, we apologize for our technical difficulties, but he will be able to speak to us via phone. So Randy, over to you. Thank you, Ambassador Elliott, uh, Mr. Nifty, panelists and guests. Uh, thank you for allowing me to join you here today to discuss women's empowerment in Tajikistan. As you know, gender equality and women's empowerment are vital to the success of USAID's work, and women's entrepreneurship is a major pathway to those goals. USAID helps women along that pathway by building women's business skills, increasing their access to finance, and growing access to new markets for women-owned businesses. Today, I'd like to discuss five major obstacles that we see to this type of work here in Tajikistan, highlight some unique aspects of women's economic empowerment in the country, share some brief successes, and talk about how COVID-19 has impacted all of this. So first off, while we see that the government of Tajikistan has adopted legislation and policies that recognize the role that women play in the economic life of society, we do see that implementation of these policies requires further efforts. One example of this is the labor code. It guarantees equality in employment, working conditions, and pay. But we see that women receive only about 60% of the wages of their male counterparts. Second, Tajikistan's social norms and gender roles influence women's opportunities and occupational choices. Women are generally employed in lower paying jobs, household chores, caregiving duties, and a lack of daycare centers in many areas present a challenge to women participating in the workforce. Third, Research and assessments show that, in general, women in Tajikistan lack self-confidence and self-advocacy skills that are often important for economic success. In those assessments, women have stated what would help them most in economic empowerment is greater self-esteem and self-confidence. Fourth, there's a limited access to finance that prevents women from expanding their businesses. We know that women are three and a half times more likely than their male counterparts to borrow from family and friends. And financial institutions have not yet fully grasped the potential of tailored financial products for women-owned businesses and meeting the specific financing needs of women entrepreneurs as a distinct customer group. And fifth, low financial literacy and business skills leave women less exposed to business opportunities and knowledge networks as evidenced by the generally poor quality of business plans submitted as part of the government's presidential grants program. Now, these five barriers to women's entrepreneurship could describe many countries in the world. Tajikistan, however, has an additional idiosyncrasy that makes it stand apart from most other countries, and that is the issue of remittances. 
only a handful of countries in the world are more dependent on remittances than Tajikistan. Nearly 40% of households depend on remittances from family members working abroad. Remittances accounted for 30% of GDP in 2018, down from nearly 50% just a few years earlier. The scale of remittances and the impact on Tajikistan's social fabric of the absence of more than one million people, nearly all men, is far too complex to discuss here in a, in a five-minute keynote speech. Suffice it to say that, when Tajikistan, that Tajikistan has few peers when it comes to the interaction of obstacles to women entrepreneurship and remittances. And yet, despite these challenges and idiosyncrasies, USAID has been successful in showing how empowering women economically can benefit the entire family unit with important demonstration effects. Women engaged in USAID's income generating activities such as the Women's Entrepreneurship and Empowerment Project and the Agribusiness Competitiveness Activity in Tajikistan experienced increased support from their husbands and other family members after they saw the financial gains from the women-led economic activity. In fact, in one case, the father of one of our beneficiaries was initially quite reluctant to have his daughter participate in an exchange program. Yet, after seeing the impact of the program, he later came to our implementers asking whether there were more economic entrepreneurship programs in which his daughter could participate. So clear evidence of an impact there. Now, the COVID pandemic has had untold effects on all parts of society, including on micro, micro and small enterprises um, in Tajikistan, many of which employ women. The pandemic has required us to re revisit our approach in supporting women's entrepreneurship. USAID's programs increasingly found e-commerce to be a tool that helps businesses to function better when borders are closed, movements are restricted, and telework becomes more common. So USAID remains dedicated to economic empowerment of women in Tajikistan and will continue our investments in advancing the rights of women and girls, giving them the skills and the tools that they need to become better leaders and helping women to grow their businesses. So I thank you for the opportunity to, have, uh, to let me join you today, and I look forward to hearing from the panelists later this morning. Well, thank you, Wendy, for those um, remarks. And because we started a little bit late, um, rather than ask you questions now, I hope you can stay on and, and participate in our discussion after our panelists uh, make their opening remarks. So I'm going to briefly introduce our distinguished panel, uh, three women that I knew and worked with uh, when I lived in uh, Tajikistan, and we're very honored to have them here today. So our first panelist is Dr. Gulbakor uh, Makamova, and she is the founder, CEO, and board chair of the National Association of Business Women of Tajikistan, one of the first nonprofit membership organizations in Tajikistan, uniting over 3,500 women entrepreneurs. She's also the co-founder and first deputy CEO of Imon International, a microfinance organization for women. Um, and I was very fortunate when I was the ambassador to see all the great work that um, she did in both of these areas. Most recently, she's also founded a nonprofit organization in Minneapolis, Minnesota called Financial Inclusion and Development, which focuses on providing technical assistance to a network of microfinance institutions in the CIS countries. Our next panelist is Nasibakon Aminova. And Nasiba Kohn is the executive director of the National Association of Small and Medium Business of the Republic of Tajikistan. She's also a member of the task force group for development of women's entrepreneurship under the State Committee on Investments and State Property Management in Tajikistan. Since 2018, she also served as the ambassador for Women's Entrepreneurship Day in Tajikistan and was the technical organizer for the Women's Regional Business Forum in 2018 and 2019. And our third panelist is someone I know quite well. Uh, again, she works at uh, U.S. Embassy Dushanbe. It's Malika Jurakalova. 
She's a design and social inclusion ex specialist at the USAID mission in uh, Embassy Dushanbe. She assists in developing new projects and programs which integrate gender equality, female empowerment, uh, and social inclusion um, across project cycles for USAID, looking at economic growth, democracy, governance, health, and education portfolios. That's a, a big job, Malika, so I'm glad you're doing it. She also serves as one of the three co-chairs of the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group at the U.S. Embassy in Dushanbe. She firmly believes, as I think we all do in this panel today, that women and girls, when given access to the right opportunities, are the key to creating positive change in our society. So what I'd like to do is, and I hope that um, Gulbakor, maybe you can uh, start us out and uh, with your thoughts on, on today's topic. So I will turn the screen over to you. Thank you, Madam Ambassador, for the wonderful introduction. First of all, good afternoon and warm greetings to all from Tajikistan. I am deeply honored and privileged to speak on behalf of women entrepreneurs representing small medium enterprises. My organization, the National Association of Business Women of Tajikistan, has spent uh, the last 25 years supporting women who want to start and develop their businesses, implementing the large scale women's economic empowerment projects, reducing the gender gap in financial inclusion and rising gender investment, as well as empowering women to tackle climate change in order to build more equitable, sustainable and inclusive economy. My job here is to reiterate the importance and value of investment in women in developing countries. The importance of investment with gender lens to support women's attempts to access good quality jobs, build resilient businesses, and manage the lasting impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Also emphasize the importance of bridging the gender gap in financial inclusion boosting the role of financial technology in this process and eliminating the existing barriers. COVID-19 has highlighted the serious weaknesses of women MSMEs in Tajikistan. Women entrepreneurs are concentrated in services and trade, the two sectors that generally have a weak capacity to grow and develop it and are easily impacted by shocks to the economy. During the pandemic, many women either choose or were pressured to look after their children and family at the expense of their work. This highlights the precocious nature of women-owned and run businesses in patriarchal society where the woman does not have overall control over the decision and whether to op operate in business or not. If these women are not supported in returning to work recovering and restarting their business today, we will be thrown back even more. Women's involvement in business and economy has never been significant in developing countries such as Tajikistan. For example, only 22% MSMEs in Tajikistan are women lead, and those are mainly in micro business, often operating informally with only 9% incorporated as legal entities. The gender gap in financial inclusion in Tajikistan is more than 7%. Well, <laughs> how we can change this? Um, women entrepreneurs need to step up their business competences, financial and technological uh, awareness. They need to be provided access to funding that meets their needs. The lower level uh, of skills in women compared to men has made it harder for them to cope in the crisis situation of COVID-19. Lower access to uh, digital technology has been a barrier for them to adapt uh, their businesses to remote way of trading. We are uh, calling upon everyone to move from why this, why is this happening to how we can change this. 
The shocks that have been seen from COVID-19 can be expected in the future from climate change induced shocks. Women lead businesses need to cover more diverse sectors of the economy in order, in order to be uh, more resilient and stable. Fighting domestic violence and eradicating stereotypes are vital step to lifting barriers, preventing women's economic empowerment, which allow women to take control over their businesses and respond to shocks to the economy. And business skills and know-how for women must be improved to allow them to make a good decision, manage the risk, and have diverse businesses. I'm calling on everyone here to recognize the positive impact that women-owned MSMEs have on the economy and on the society, but also the support that is needed to allow these businesses to react and adapt to major economic shocks. COVID-19 show us what happens in the time of crisis. We know that climate-based economic shocks will happen in the future. And now we have to prepare for this. That final appeal brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope um, you find it helpful um, and thank you for your uh, attention and time and I am open for the questions. Thank you very much. Well, thanks, Gulbakar. I mean, I think you really laid out um, the challenges that women face and um, but also the opportunities for women. So um, why don't we now go to uh, Naziba Khan, if you can uh, give us your thoughts, especially because you're involved with the, the task force and um, and what your thinking is on, you know, opportunities for women in Tajikistan. I think you're on mute. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me, but um, we can't hear you uh, because you're on yes, mute. Yeah, okay. oh, yeah, there you go. Now we hear you. Sorry. Yeah. Let me greet you on behalf of the National Association of Small and Medium Business of Tajikistan. Moreover, I'd like to express my personal gratitude for the opportunity to participate in this open session dedicated to the women entrepreneurship in Tajikistan. Established in September 1993, our association empowers and develops members and entrepreneurs of the country to achieve economic prosperity, protection of business interests, and social responsibility, including through the gentle support of women's and social entrepreneurship. Frankly speaking, the last two years have been very difficult both for the private sector and for the entire population of our country. Undoubtedly, the consequences of the pandemic have negatively affected the whole world. However, we as an association continue to support our members after a short standstill, especially in the midst of the difficult economic crisis and the closure of trade. In the midst of the pandemic, we were all faced with the fact that the physical restrictions on movement affected the fall in the profits of companies involved in the sale of retail goods. In October 2020, we were able to start a project aimed at establishing an ecosystem for the development of e-commerce in Tajikistan. It is no secret that the delivery services, services for accepting non-cash payments and the introduction of QR codes for contactless payments have been increased. Back in December 2019, the government of the country approved the concept of the digital economy in the Republic of Tajikistan. The concept is based on national development strategy for the period up to 2030 and represents a common vision of using modern digital technologies in order to achieve the highest goal of long-term development of Tajikistan, namely improving the living standards of the country's population and significantly reducing poverty as well as creating new jobs. However, the same documents also notes that only about 35% of the population has access to the internet, most of whom use it through the mobile devices. It can be assumed that the most of this population lives in cities which has a somehow stable income. 
And if you will return to statistics and understanding of the general financial literacy of the population and the low rate among women, then the picture will become even sadder. It is obvious that the new opportunities that the development of e-commerce in Tajikistan opens up for small and medium-sized enterprises will allow them to increase their sales, export, and create new jobs. Today, in Tajikistan, several projects funded by the international community and partners on development are being implemented at creating an e-commerce system, including one of our projects. All of this project provides support for women in business and are aimed at increasing and share of female entrepreneurship in the digital field. For example, several women's businesses have already been able to reorient themselves to providing online services by paying for the order through mobile applications. For example, the social cafe Charter is well known in Dushanbe, became part of the EASIS initiative and introduced an online payment service stimulating its customers with discount coupons. This social cafe that supports women victims of violence and is also operated by women is virtually located in the e-commerce section of My Babylon application, where the client can make a choice from the offered virtual menu, pay with their touch cards, and receive the order without leaving home. Dear colleagues, dear friends, frankly speaking, the short example is a drop in the ocean, a drop in the ocean of opportunities that the women's business has. It is difficult to talk about progress when there is no coordinated support of incentive measures for the transition from the informal to the formal sector of the economy, and even more to the e-commerce. Pandemic had made clear to all of us that the e-commerce and the internet are essential to economic well-being. Most of the women's businesses is based on personal skills, create creative initiatives that allow them to cover the expenses more or less consistently. Stimulating women entrepreneurship, including in the online space, should be significant through the provision of additional education, affordable loans for the installation of equipment, from cost accounting system, production lines, to post-terminal equipment, including motivational preferences. Again, I really appreciate this unique opportunity to raise the importance of consolidation all the efforts of all activists to support women empowerment around the world, and especially in Tajikistan. Thank you. Well, thank you, Naziba Khan, and I think that you really have uh, identified the digital economy and the importance of, especially when there is something like a pandemic, the importance of being able to do things electronically and the challenges that um, not just women, but everyone in Tajikistan and, and in a lot of rural areas around the world are facing, even in the US. In the US, there are several uh, places where there is no broadband and it's an issue that we need to address. So now I'd like to um, uh, turn the floor over to uh, Malika. Uh, Malika again works for USAID and is very involved in a lot of these projects. So it's good to see you, Malika and please uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Madam Ambassador. Thank you very much and apologies for the connection issues we had uh, and that's why we were kind of late. I'm really privileged uh, to join you all today at the discussion which is organized by the Caspian Policy Center on Women's Entrepreneurship in Tajikistan. This is a vital initiative to raise awareness uh, on the importance of the development of women's, e women's economic empowerment, uh, in particular women's entrepreneurship in Tajikistan. At USAID, Gender equality and women's empowerment are at the core of our development work. We strive to reduce gender disparities, gender-based violence, and ensure women's equal access to economic, social, and decision-making processes. USAID helps women increase their business acumen, gain access to finance, and strengthen the capacity of women-owned businesses to access new markets. Together with the government of Tajikistan and other development partners, USAID strives to remove the barriers for female entrepreneurship and create a business environment in which women could expand or just launch their businesses. For example, the task force that you mentioned, Madam Ambassador, that is established under the State Investment Committee and State Property Management, this task force has been expanded right now. And it also covers not, it targets not only women's entrepreneurship, but also youth and people with disabilities. This task force closely cooperates with USAID and other development partners to support female entrepreneurs in this region 
And uh, one of the achievements I would say is uh, our annual Central Asia Regional Women's Business Forum, uh, which is uh, a great, uh, I would say the ideal platform to speak on the barriers and challenges women in this region face. Uh, and uh, they are, like share their lessons learned. Our economic empowerment programs bring women into the workforce by providing technical assistance and mentorship to start or grow their small businesses, as well as address challenges related to women labor force by developing market-driven solutions. Since our USA Tajikistan mission director, Dr. Kostad, in his keynote remarks, spoke about the barriers and challenges faced by female entrepreneurs in Tajikistan. Therefore, with your permission, I would like to speak more about USAID funded projects that have significant component on women's entrepreneurship and their work in this field. USAID's Agribusiness Competitiveness Project trained 385 women on new grafting and post harvest handling techniques and 800 more women and youth on milk hygiene and aggregation to have more income. To increase access to finance for women and youth, USAID also works with microfinance institutions to develop new low interest loan products on developing small scale businesses in dairy and horticulture sectors, providing valuable support to women and youth during the pandemic. As a result, four microfinance institution partners gave 231 affordable loans to women, totaling around $262,000. It also facilitates grants component, prioritizing agribusiness led by women and youth to generate economic opportunities for women in underserved communities. Only in uh, 2020, another project, which is called the USAID Competitiveness Trade and Jobs Creation Regional Project, promoted women's economic empowerment by sponsoring startup weekend events in Dushanbe and in uh, two districts of Khatlom province, uh, in Bokhtar and another one in Hujand. The USAID Feed the Future Tajikistan Agriculture and Land Governance Project supports women-owned micro and small enterprises, particularly for women smallholder farmers. This project increases access to quality inputs and supports uh, the development of an inclusive extension system for smallholder farmers and households with kitchen gardens. It also helps create diversified employment opportunities, including off-farm employment, particularly for women, to further strengthen community resilience. And just for information, uh, uh, recently I found out that um, it also this project also plans to train 300 women on serving and help them to employ them in existing textile factory in Hatlon. The request came from the textile factory and therefore they are planning to train those women. Through our Thrive Tajikistan Partnership for Socioeconomic Development Project, USAID established 179 community-based saving groups in Hatlon and Badashan districts with a total of 2,934 members, 94% of whom are women. Of course, again, uh, we can't just ignore uh, uh, the current situation, which is linked with the COVID-19 pandemic. And it made us uh, to think more about the utilization of e-commerce and how to develop it in Tajikistan. Through our Future for Growth Initiative project, USAID supported Tajikistan's Chamber of Commerce and Industry to conduct the first e-commerce council meeting this spring, where the participants had a chance to learn about the current development of e-commerce in Tajikistan and start a discussion on its future development. Also, the project signed an agreement with the National Association of Small and Medium Business of Tajikistan, which is represented by NASIBA, to create conditions to connect merchants to e-commerce by introducing Babylon QR code system. This code system was developed on the basis of a single QR code and is envisioned to promote their products and services. Up to now, more than 2,000 merchants are connected to the system and 25% of them are women. Of course, USAID will keep supporting uh, women and girls in Tajikistan to build their capacity and of course, uh, empower them economically. We believe in female entrepreneurship and we will strive further to provide our support and help to those women and girls who want to embark on launching or expanding their businesses. Once again, I would like to thank you for giving such an opportunity to speak today. Thank you very much. 
Well, thank you, Malika. And I think that you, um, I'm actually very pleased to hear about all the training programs and the things that USAID is doing, um, not only to support women, but to support business development in Tajikistan. And, you know, when we go to the questions, I thought maybe I'd start with, uh, with you, uh, Gulbakar. Um, you know, one skill area, if we're talking about training, a skill area that's been cited, and I think you mentioned it, that women entrepreneurs need to be able to develop sustainable business plans, especially in Tajikistan, given the semi-formal nature um, of the women-owned business uh, community. So given your success in building sustainable long-term projects, which I have seen, especially your women's incubator in Ujian, um, what do you think that government, uh, commercial, or the nonprofit sector might be able to do to help women develop better business related capabilities, like being able to develop and, um, and draft a business plan? Uh, thank you for the questions, uh, Madam Ambassador. The questions uh, you ask, it's very uh, relevant, actual, and one that does not have a short answer. What we can do to promote the growth of the women's businesses. Um, many women entrepreneurs remain in the same condition for years without growing, without even leaving the informal sector. Or how we can uh, engage women in entrepreneurial activities. There are many women with the excellent skills and potential who cannot overcome their fear and start their businesses. Um, many of them cannot find, uh, find enough funding to start. I am deeply assured that if um, women business owners can expand their uh, human and social uh, capital and have a greater access to market information, they can grow uh, their businesses in the sustainable way. Uh, they can um, uh, uh, grow their businesses from informal micro entrepreneurs to small and medium sized businesses. Uh, we, we must develop a, uh, a systematic and a permanent approach to build a management capacity of women entrepreneurs, provide technical assistance and consultation, expand access to market information and capital. Not a bunch of um, one of projects, but uh, um, but a comprehensive support system must be in place. Uh, from my experience, um, uh, one uh, highly efficient and effective tool is interactive seminars, which consider uh, specific business objectives and find solutions jointly involving, involving uh, local and, uh, and international uh, experts. Uh, uh, nowadays, they are all available online and we need to uh, make uh, digital learning resources available for women in remote areas of Tajikistan and the local, in, in local language. I should say that um, access to capital is the key. Uh, and um, as many women, when they start their uh, business, uh, they often um, rely uh, solely for their uh, savings. Uh, and as a result, uh, their business um, uh, get a micro and semi-formal status right from the start. Uh, with very uh, slow growth and development capacity. Informality is a very, uh, is, it's a big issue is very high for women businesses informality, which make uh, it uh, difficult for them to apply for credit. And they proportionally solve the problem by applying for personal loans. For example, um, startup financing is still uh, not uh, available in Tajikistan, not exist in Tajikistan. Bank and MFIs do not offer loans for starting new businesses. Uh, and many uh, entrepreneurs are forced to take again consumer loan, which is have a shorter um, a, a repayment period and high interest rate. Um, and uh, uh, right now we know that because of pandemic and uh, um, current market trends, digital transformation of businesses is the key. To follow these trends, women entrepreneurs 
urgently need to develop their skills of working with social media and digital marketing to promote their, uh, to promote, uh, their businesses and develop their businesses. To summarize, I can say that we need the comprehensive and a systematic approach to support women entrepreneurs, namely at the first legal and expert work to create favorable environment and condition for a development of women's entrepreneurship, providing the stimulus, incentives, benefits to bridge the gender gap in business. We need educational program on uh, highly relevant topics using interactive methodology, engaging experts. We need to promote the image of women entrepreneurs through the major events like a National Women Entrepreneurs of the Year contest, Farah, which is organized semi-annually by a women association. And of course, uh, we need to promote financial literacy and expand uh, access uh, to funding. Um, to issue uh, low interest uh, rate loans for SMEs, for startups, uh, for women lead businesses, maybe uh, um, attracting their blended finance with support with the international IFIs and uh, uh, government resources. And banks and MFIs need to collect and analyze gender disaggregated data in, in order to offer financial products and solutions which is meet the needs of the women uh, segment. Um, again, uh, it's a, a complex approach and, um, uh, and all the services and support and technical assistance should be provided very important in the sustainable way. Well, thanks. And I think you have um, really outlined all the, the things that need to be done, but especially you know, access to finance and understanding how um, how can you um, can you get access to finance? Because I think that's an area where women especially uh, need some more training. But um, I'd want an, another question from uh, uh, for you, Nazi Bakan. You know, you've been involved in uh, organizing a number of national and regional events like the Women's Entrepreneurship Days, and I wonder if you might be able to tell us a little bit about. Um, the impact of those, especially, I know when I was in Tajikistan, one of the things that we were trying to do is to not only to support women in Tajikistan, but connect women in the region um, with other countries of Central Asia and also across the border in, in, in Afghanistan. And I wonder if uh, you might be able to tell us uh, a little bit about those activities. Yes, thank you for the question. Indeed, for several years, with the exception for the last pandemic year in 2020, our association was the technical organizer of a number of events, including the Regional Women's Business Forum. And in 2019, the new Regional Forum was held, which brought together active representatives of the target group from five Central Asia countries, including Afghanistan, and namely well-known uh, women's Business Association, social and women entrepreneurs, partners in development, the representative of the K government agencies and others. The female asset was represented at all levels from small and distant villages from all the Central Asia countries to capital cities. Firstly, as I see, um, the main impact of such events is uh, open communication and personal networking. This is the understanding that the world is filled with like-minded people, again, as I told. Secondly, this is an opportunity for building a dialogue between the government and the private sector. That is actually a part of the private-public dialogue in an open format. And I'm really sorry that the pandemic force us to go online. Also, this is an advantage of going to other dialect platform as we are now. And however, nothing can replace personal communication, human worms and support. Hybrid formats, which have become the norm over the past year, unfortunately filled with the problems due to the low internet in, at least in my country and further alienate us from each other. Yeah. I would agree. And I think, um, you know, the it's a, a blessing and a curse because I'm so had we happy that we do have the Internet and we've been able to communicate like we are today uh, via uh, the virtual world. Uh, but on the other hand, um, 
if you don't have good uh, internet service, uh, if you, um, you, it makes it more difficult for you to be connected. So you can definitely be more isolated. And likewise, um, there's no substitute for face-to-face uh, -face, um, uh, contact, whether it's in business or in, you know, in, um, in programs uh, like we have today. Um, so why don't I go to some of the questions from um, the field? And um, one of the questions that we have here is what incentives, and this can be for any of the panelists, uh, can be provided um, or barriers may be removed to increase the number of women in Tajikistan seeking jobs, uh, especially in traditionally male dominated field. I know that um, again, having the migration of uh, workers go outside of the country did provide, because since most of them were males, at least what I saw, it provided opportunities for women to perhaps try uh, business that they traditionally wouldn't have been involved in. But given the pandemic, um, you know, are there ways and are women allowed to and encouraged to be involved in uh, traditionally male dominated fields? The one that I think of the most is perhaps even in agriculture, where we think of this perhaps as a male dominated field. But um, a lot of women, I think, have been very successful in agriculture. And I know USAID um, through their programs have helped women in, in that area. So anyone want to answer maybe that question? I Malika, can go ahead, go yeah. ahead. Yes, Madam Ambassador. Uh, before I move to that question, I just wanted to add something uh, uh, because Nasiba was talking about that Regional Women's Business Forum. And we had a conversation with Nasiba about uh, conducting uh, that forum in a hybrid way. And uh, honestly speaking, as Mas uh, Nasiba mentioned, uh, we have uh, like uh, problems, serious problems with internet connection. And uh, uh, we, particip we participated uh, in uh, several of uh, hybrid forms conferences in Tajikistan. And unfortunately, the result was not that much positive. That's why, unfortunately, uh, this year, maybe we will, uh, uh, we won't be having uh, that Central Asia Regional Women's Business Forum uh, as we didn't have last year, but hopefully, hopefully next year we will try to conduct it uh, in a way that, uh, again, it will remind us uh, of uh, all the previous uh, uh, regional women's uh, business uh, entrepreneurship forums that we conducted previously. Uh, as for the uh, male-dominated uh, uh, professions, I think here, again, uh, we need uh, to kind of create some incentives for women. Uh, we, we can't speak uh, that women will go to those uh, male-dominated uh, professions uh, if we are not providing them with uh, basic uh, like opportunities. Uh, and again, uh, like uh, the first uh, is access uh, to knowledge, uh, to uh, basically those specialties uh, if they want to be engaged there. And uh, while talking uh, to all those beneficiaries uh, in agricultural sector, because uh, we are mostly working uh, uh, on women's entrepreneurship, mostly in agribusiness, in agriculture, and uh, uh, USAID has really, I mean, wonderful achievements uh, in, in that terms. And when I talk to those women in the field, again, they say that uh, if we don't have, let's say, uh, the childcare centers. Uh, if uh, uh, we can't leave our children uh, uh, with someone because uh, uh, the society is uh, very patriarchal and everything on women's shoulders, uh, even those uh, women who are uh, on uh, at the age of uh, uh, mothers-in-law, uh, they don't wanna take uh, uh, this responsibility and everything uh, basically uh, on the shoulders uh, of uh, younger women or women uh, of the reproductive age. Therefore, in order to create those opportunities, we need to have at least uh, some childcare centers, uh, like uh, some, uh, uh, some places uh, that women at least uh, could leave their children for uh, two or three hours, right? If we, if we are thinking about uh, uh, teaching them uh, some training, like giving them some knowledge and attracting them to our training courses. In this case, again, we need to organize maybe within that uh, uh, training session, maybe like a, a temporary childcare center, asking somebody from the project staff to come or just to hire some person uh, for temporary time, that person comes uh, and uh, takes care of children while uh, women are taking uh, some uh, lessons, some uh, courses uh, in order to basically be in those uh, male dominated uh, professions because uh, those women who didn't have knowledge or experience in those uh, male dominated uh, professions, they cannot go directly and be there. 
this is what I wanted to add. Over. Yeah, those are really, uh, really good points. We're just about out of time, but I'd like to ask just one more question. Um, uh, one of our um, participants asked, and, and because you know we're based in the U.S., what steps can economically developed countries uh, like the U.S. and the international community take to promote, um, you know, Tajik women's access to the global, not just the digital economy uh, in the region or in the country, but to the global um, digital economy? Any advice or suggestions you have that we can take back? to our colleagues here in the US and Europe and around the world? You know, whoever wants to answer that, maybe Gulbakor, do you have any suggestions since you're familiar with the US um, economy? Yes, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, one of the uh, huge obstacles of the women in business is the size of the business and the quality of products which is they produced and potential for exporting these um, uh, goods and services. And uh, access to the uh, e-commerce and access to overall uh, FinTech and digital solutions. It's quite uh, comprehensive for women. It's, they're facing a list of challenges. Uh, one of them, of course, it's a low, um, um, low uh, financial literacy and um, technological um, skills. And uh, another hand, it's um, again, access to the capital in order to develop and uh, to support their businesses. Access to capital, it's huge issue for Tajikistan. On the one hand, we have a, uh, quite a bunch of the MFIs and banks providing uh, loans for uh, SMEs. But if you will see the, um, the proportion of the women who has uh, accounts with the banks, who has uh, loans with the banks, who has uh, uh, skills uh, to uh, promote the products uh, using the e-commerce and e using the e-marketing, uh, the proportion is very uh, small. Again, um, it's uh, difficult for women overall uh, to integrate to the formal financial sector in Tajikistan. You know that the 75% of population of Tajikistan lives in the rural area. Most women uh, based in the remote area, in the rural area. For them to uh, increase the skills in the using the uh, fintechs, um, uh, we need to, to create special uh, comprehensive and uh, quite a wide scale uh, program and projects in order to um, help them to embrace the uh, um, fintech and uh, embrace the um, uh, the um, the e skills and help them to transform their business um, uh, to make a digital transformation of their businesses. Uh, and uh, I would like to say that the, uh, it's in the elementary um, reasons is that uh, not all women have a mobile phone. The figures currently standing at 52%. Very small proportion of women have uh, internet access. General uh, affordable high quality internet remains a very big issue to, to date in the country. And uh, I would like to say that the, uh, Overall, women uh, are generally less active in financial and economic uh, life than men. Um, women, um, uh, uh, share of women in, in employment, share of women in business, women having account with financial institutions, all these indicators lag behind the male population. And also, I think that there are most uh, financial institutions not to consider women as a uh, uh, as an attractive segment or as a separate segment. Um, they are not um, use big, big data to analyze. They are not to make a deep researches of understanding their needs and providing their real uh, uh, products and solutions which is meet their um, uh, uh, needs. And uh, also the big problem of the, we are talking right now about the uh, gender dis um, um, uh, segregation in the specific areas. Yes, so many women in this uh, social sphere, but uh, it's, a, it's a huge problem is uh, also under representation of women in the financial system of the country. Uh, less than 20% of managers and employees in financial 
institution are women. Again, um, to, um, uh, to, uh, to consider, uh, uh, to help women, we need, again, um, the, some maybe national strategy uh, to supporting women entrepreneurs overall and more coordination. Uh, I would like just to um, uh, mention that the National Association of Business Women of, of Tajikistan, together with the National Bank of Tajikistan, uh, initiated the, the first joint uh, conference on financial inclusion in August uh, two, 2019. The event um, uh, resulted in uh, establishment of the task force uh, which is uh, this designing of the, this, uh, with the goal of designing the national strategy of, of financial inclusion in Tajikistan and also separate documents, the national strategy of financial literacy in Tajikistan. And National Association of Business Women has an active uh, uh, participation in the development of this document. And we, it's, this document is not yet been adopted, but we uh, have a lobbied a strong gender approach and component in these two strategies. Uh, I hope it will be adopted. And uh, the, the main issue is also we have so many good uh, laws and strategies, but we not allocated enough funding for successful implementation. Yeah. Um, that's why um, the, uh, how we um, can, um, the first support for women of businesses is to help them to, um, for transition from informal, semi-informal to formal and help them to build their capacity and integrate it to the global economy. Well, thanks very much. And I want to thank, we've gone over a little bit, but we started a little bit late. So I want to thank all the panelists for your insights, for sharing your information. I think that you've clearly identified the challenges that the women of Tajikistan, but also the women of the region you know, face. And I look forward to more discussions like this. Again, uh, for our participants, you can go to our website and see the policy brief that we have. Um, there will be um, a recording of the program, but also to read the policy brief that we've um, we've developed about women's uh, promoting and, and supporting women's entrepreneurship. So thanks again. And uh, I look forward to more interaction with all of you. And thanks to FGON and, uh, and this, the Caspian Policy Center for sponsoring today's uh, program. I miss Tajikistan. I hope to come back sometime soon. We miss you too, Madam Ambassador. Please come. Welcome. Bye-bye. Okay.